Module four is all about the cell. And if I'm gonna be completely honest with you, every time I look at how a cell functions and all of the different parts of it, I am just utterly amazed that um, our mighty creator God has put together all of these things in such a way that something so tiny that we can't even see it with our naked eye is able to do all of these different processes and it's able to sustain life, it's able to reproduce, it's able to do all of the things that, that we do as much, much larger creatures, that every cell in our body is capable of those same functions. And it just amazes me the engineering and the creativity and the detail that is involved in every individual cell. And so I hope that as we go through this module that you will gain some of that same uh, fascination and just amazement at what our God has put together and what he has created. Um, we're going to start out with uh, the 12 functions of life that each cell has to be able to perform. Um, now you will find out in the next section that there are two different kinds of cells. And so if you have a, an organism that is just one cell by itself, then it will perform all 12 of these functions. If you have a multicellular organism, some of the cells can specialize so that they don't have to perform every single function, although they will still perform most of them. Um, but I'm getting, my, getting ahead of myself there. So let's go back and let's talk about uh, the 12 functions of life that our cells have to perform in order to keep existing. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to put this into an analogy form and we're going to talk about uh, how your household runs and we're going to compare that to how a cell runs. Now, just like with any analogy, at some point they do start to fall apart, but hopefully um, what I um, compare this to will at least give you some idea of what the cell is doing in comparison to some of the everyday activities that we do. There are, as I said, 12 different functions and we're going to classify them into four separate categories. Um, movement of substances into the cell, um, movement of substances out of the cell, um, use of substances inside the cell and then other processes that didn't fit neatly into one of those three categories. So let's start out with uh, movement of substances into the cell. Um, we're going to compare this to uh, when your, um, maybe it's your mom or maybe it's your dad goes grocery shopping and they have to um, take the groceries and they get them from the store and they put them in the car and they bring them home. Well, of course, you're not going to just leave the groceries in the car, uh, in the driveway. You're going to actually carry those groceries into the house so that you are able to utilize them. And so when the cell brings the groceries into its house, so to speak, that is called ingestion or um, you may also see that term referred to as absorption. Absorption, ingestion or absorption. And so basically all they're doing is uh, the cell is going to have a method for bringing um, amino acids or carbohydrates or lipids or whatever other kind of materials that it needs going to bring those things inside the cell so that it can then utilize them. Just like when you take your groceries and you bring them into the house. Um, there are some very complex processes, some different types of processes for how the cell goes about bringing these things inside of itself, inside of its cell membrane. And when we get towards the end of the chapter, we'll talk exactly about how a cell goes about bringing those groceries inside. Now, um, once the the cell gets the groceries inside, once it gets its substances inside the cell, there are a number of different things that it can do with those groceries. Um, one of the things that it's going to do is digestion, which probably um, would make sense because you, you realize that when you intake food, you need to digest it. But when we're talking about the digestion of a cell, what we're really talking about is that it's going to break down the substances that it brings in in a way that it's going to be able to use those substances for specific purposes within the cell. So for example, if you buy at the store, you're at the store and you buy a 10 pound bag of potatoes, 
um, you're going to take that bag of potatoes and you're going to break it down into smaller components. Unless you have a really, really huge family, uh, you may take two or three pounds of those potatoes and you may save them to bake with one meal. And then for another meal, you're going to take those and you're going to fry them up um, and make fried potatoes out of them. Or maybe you're going to take part of the potatoes and you're going to cut it, cut them in chunks and put them into a stew later on. So you take a bigger package and you break it down into smaller pieces into something that you're going to be able to use for individual meals. So that's what the cell is going to do as well. It's going to take these large molecules and it's going to break them down into smaller components so that it's able to utilize them. Okay. Um, another thing that cells have to do within themselves is called respiration. And we have talked about the process of respiration before where in our, just our normal everyday vernacular, when we think of respiration, we tend to think of breathing, you know, inhaling and exhaling is respiration. In terms of what cells do, however, respiration means that they're going to take some sort of material, what kind of whatever material that they're using, and they're going to turn that into energy. And so when they turn it into energy, um, that would be sort of like when we take um, raw meat, which we don't normally eat raw meat, we're gonna cook that and we're going to turn it into another form so that we can then eat it. Uh, we don't usually tend to use uh, butter uh, by itself. We don't just take a stick of butter and, you know, chaw off the end of it. We melt it and use it for other things. Uh, we may fry our eggs in it. We may put it on a piece of bread and eat uh, bread, and, bread and jelly and butter um, on it. We use butter when we make cookies. And so it's a component in lots of other things. And so what we're doing is we're taking those groceries and we're putting them into another form so that we're going to eat those groceries, okay? Respiration is when the cell takes those things that it has taken in and it turns them into energy so that the cell can function. Um, we're all aware of our, how our bodies do this all the time. Our, our bodies will take in um, all sorts of different types of foods and then we, if we don't eat, we know that we're not going to live super long and so we have to eat in order to keep producing the energy that we need to live. Okay. Um, the, another thing that cells have to do is called biosynthesis. And this is something that we actually talked about in an earlier chapter. Biosynthesis just means that you're going to be making new substances. So think back to our grocery analogy. If you bring home ground beef and eggs and uh, breadcrumbs, um, you may have all those different ingredients, but then if you compile all those things together, you could make a meatloaf out of it. And so you're going to take your raw ingredients, you're going to synthesize a meatloaf from your raw ingredients. Well, the cell is going to do something similar. It's going to take all of the different things that it has broken down in digestion, and it's going to put them together in another form uh, for biosynthesis. So really what you can think of is that um, digestion is going to take what has been brought into the cell and it's going to break it down and generally it's going to serve one of two purposes. It's either going to take those products and it's going to use them for respiration or for energy or it's going to take those products and it's going to put them together in another form um, in the form of biosynthesis and it's going to make some sort of new product that it needs or that maybe that some other cell needs and it's going to export. Okay, so digestion then is going to lead to one of these other two processes here. Okay, um, then um, just like when um, you put all the groceries away after you start using up your groceries, you then are going to generate waste. So you've got packaging that you're going to have to get rid of. You've got banana peels, you've got potato peels, and you're going to have to get rid of all of those things. Okay. So, um, we know that our bodies get rid of waste cells have to get rid of waste also. And so the waste is something that has to be moved out of the cell. So we're going to jump to this category here, the movement of substances out of the cell. The first one is called excretion. And excretion is when a cell takes waste that is dissolved. 
and moves it out of the cell. And so basically then this is going to be uh, liquid waste or it's going to be things that have been dissolved substances. So it's not all necessarily liquid, but it could definitely be something that has been dissolved. And then we have another um, term, which is ingestion. And that's for solid waste. Okay, human beings have, you know, dissolved waste and solid waste as well. But how are you going to remember the difference between these two terms? Well, here's how I like to remember it. Excretion sounds like squeeze. They both have a long E in them. And if you think about a sponge and you squeeze the sponge, you squeeze all of the water out of it. Um, if that water has other stuff dissolved in it, like if you've used a sponge to wash the dishes and then you go to wash your sponge out afterwards, you take the sponge and you squeeze all that dirty dishwater out of it. Okay, so you're squeezing out this, um, this liquid or this dissolved um, waste that's dissolved in water. So that's excretion. Ingestion, ingestion kind of sounds like the word eject. And um, my kids were huge soccer players. Um, I know if you're in another country, a lot of times you call that football. And so in, in some matches, some games, if you had a player who was really not behaving himself very well, committing all kinds of fouls, at some point the, the referee would eject that player from the game. He'd hold a red card up over his head and he gets ejected from the game. So um, he doesn't squeeze the player out. You know, he throws the whole player out as a big, you know, just the whole player. And so ingestion is like ejecting a player. They're, you're going to throw out this whole big solid form of waste. Okay, so that's just one way to remember it. Excretion sounds like squeeze, excretion, squeeze like a sponge. And ingestion sounds like eject when you're going to eject a player out of a game. Okay, um, you may come up with a better way to remember it. That's just how I remember it. So moving substances out of the cell can either be excretion or ingestion and both of these are for waste but sometimes a cell needs to move things outside of it that aren't waste sometimes a cell will make products that need to be used in other cells that they will find useful um, this would be very similar to if you take some of your groceries and you make, you take the bananas and the flour and the sugar and the eggs and you make a loaf of banana bread. And you t take the banana bread over to your neighbor who maybe has been sick, maybe they just had a baby, um, maybe there's been a death in the family and so you make food and you take it to your neighbor's house so that they can utilize it, okay? And in the same way, cells will sometimes make substances and then they export them out of the cell so that other cells can use them. And that process is called secretion. They are going to secrete those substances out of the cell so that other substances or so that other cells can use them. So it just gets secreted out into the cellular fluid, the extracellular fluid that's outside of that cell. Okay, so uh, these two guys are both waste but this one is for something that is useful for another cell, okay? So um, we've moved substances into the cell, we've utilized them within the cell, we've moved substances out of the cell. Now we have some other processes that the cell has to do in order to remain alive. Now one thing that definitely has to be done is when you bring these groceries into the house, um, you're not just going to dump them on the floor right inside the front door. That would not be helpful. You'd be tripping over them all the time. So you've got to pick all those things up and you have to put them away. So that means you've got to carry the groceries from the door to the kitchen cabinet, to the refrigerator, to the freezer, to wherever it is that you're storing all of these groceries. And so that is going to be um, something similar to what the cell has to do as well. And that's just simply going to be called transport. The cell has to move the raw materials, the lipids, the amino acids, the proteins, the carbohydrates, has to move all those things around in the cell to the place where it's going to utilize them. Okay, now sometimes the entire cell is going to move. And so we're going to distinguish two different words um, between what we're moving within the cell and when the whole cell is moving. So if the entire cell is moving, we're just gonna classify that as movement. So transport is within 
the cell. And this is the entire cell that is moving. Okay, so if you think about a sperm cell, a sperm cell is going to swim to try to meet the egg cell, and so that would be classified as movement. But if a, um, a cell takes in amino acids and moves it to someplace else in the cell to, to build a protein, that's going to be classified as transport. So you want to try to keep those two words um, separated in your mind because they are two different functions. Okay, another process that the cell has to engage in is called irritability. Now, what do I mean by irritability? I do not mean that the cell is getting cranky. Uh, cells don't really have emotions. They don't get cranky like we do. Um, and so when I say irritability, we're not talking about a cranky, grouchy cell. What we're talking about is the ability of the cell to notice what is going on in its surroundings and to do something if that um, change is going to cause a problem to the cell. Um, if I go back to our house analogy, and let's say that you've just put all these groceries away and then all of a sudden the power goes out. Um, it's not a problem if it's out for just a few minutes, but if it's out for hours on end, um, you're going to have to do something with the food in the freezer. And that would probably make you irritable because then you've got to you know, come up with some sort of a plan to do something with all this food. You have to call your grandma and see if her power's uh, working does she have room in her freezer for your food or you know what can you do about that and so irritability means that there's some sort of issue some sort of problem some sort of stimulus uh, that happens and then the cell has to do something um, in order so that it's its life is not in danger so um, that's irritability another thing that the cell has to do is called homeostasis and I believe, again, that that's a word that we've talked about before. Homeostasis, um, if I kind of look at the, you can see the word home in the middle of it. And homeostasis is what you do to make your house a home. Um, your parents probably assign you chores to do. Uh, somebody needs to clean the bathroom. Somebody needs to cook dinner. Somebody needs to wash the dishes. Somebody needs to take out the trash. Uh, somebody needs to mop. Somebody needs to mow the lawn. And so all of those chores are things that you do to make your house a home and to keep everything running smoothly. And so the cell also has to do things to make sure that everything just keeps running and keeps working the way that it's supposed to, okay? Finally, the cell has to engage in reproduction. And just like us, cells don't live forever. We're not gonna live forever. Cells don't live forever. And so to continue um, the existence of, of the line that we've been given, uh, reproduction is necessary. And so cells um, do reproduce, they will divide, they will make new cells um, from old cells. You know, that's part of the cell theory that all cells arise from living cells. They don't just pop out of nowhere. Um, they have to come from living cells. And so reproduction is the last of, of the 12 functions of life that a cell has to perform, okay? So hopefully uh, that analogy helped you understand what these different processes were. Um, I want to make take a moment here and make a note about where we're going in this chapter. The next several days, you are going to be learning about, reading about a lot of different um, components within the cell, the different parts of the cell. And I'm not going to have videos on each one of those parts, but I'm gonna provide you with a lot of resources to help you learn the functions of all the different parts of the cell. The first thing that I'm gonna provide for you is, a, is two, two coloring sheets, one of a plant cell and one of an animal cell. And each day as you go through and read about the different parts of the cell, you wanna take the time to find those parts on the cell diagram and color them in. Um, I am not going to put a diagram of a cell on, a on the test for you to label, but seeing what those different structures will look like will help you put a, a um, picture in your head and then will help you remember what each one of those different parts does. For example, when you see the endoplasmic reticulum and you see how it's all nice and layered and folded, then it will help you understand, oh yeah, that makes sense then how 
uh, the endoplasmic reticulum provides structure for a cell because it kind of looks like maybe sheets of cardboard or that would provide stability for the cell that would help to hold it up. So seeing what those parts look like will also help you remember the structure of the cell, which I, or the structure of the part, which I definitely do expect that you um, will need to know. Um, another tool that I'm giving you is a, um, a chart um, that you're going to be filling in that's going to tell um, what the different parts are, uh, what the purpose of those parts are, what kind of cells you find them in. Um, some types, some of these different cell parts are in all cells. Some of them are only in animal cells. Some of them are only in plant cells. And so you want to be able to differentiate, okay, well, these things are only in plant cells and these things are only in animal cells, but these all cells have them. And so you want to be able to know the difference between those. Um, not only did I give you a blank chart for you to fill in, but I've also given you the answer so that you can check and make sure that you have all of those things in there. There is a lot of material in this chapter. And as you work your way through it, I really want to encourage you that whatever chunk you have on a particular day, make sure that you learn that chunk on that day. So if on one day you're learning about cytoplasm and cell membranes and um, ribosomes, make sure that by the end of that day, by the end of the time that you're done studying, you know what those parts of the cell do. You have colored them, you filled in the chart about them, you made your, your index cards with your vocabulary words on them, and you know what those parts do. Because if you wait and you try to cram all this in the night before the test, you're, you're not going to be very happy with yourself at all. It's going to be really, really difficult for you to learn all of that uh, just the night before the test. So really work hard at learning it all the way through as you go along and as you study it um, every single day, okay? So uh, I will let you have at that the next several days as you are going to be working on all of those parts of the cell.